Good afternoon, Rose of Living Water. And uh, this is Bishop Eric Frederick, and I want to continue this study that we were that we started probably two or three weeks ago uh, in this own uh, Babylon. Uh, <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, it, it's called by different names. Sometimes it's called by Babylon. Sometimes it's called Tyre. Uh, but it's it's the same. It's one system. But you know, sometimes the locations change. Uh, sometimes, you know, we'll read about it and uh, we'll read it in Genesis with Nimrod and him being in Babylon, then we'll see uh, it switched to Tyre, uh, but, but it's all one system. Uh, and we're going to, you know, in, in order to, to understand uh, what Babylon is, because the Lord is saying, come out of Babylon, my people, unless you uh, receive the plagues that are going to be poured out on Babylon, uh, in order to understand what it is, uh, we have to study and we have to look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 26 through 28, and it'll tell us exactly what Babylon is. And we, we looked at, you know, Revelation chapter 18, and it told us a little bit about Babylon. And, and basically what we, what we saw is that we saw that Babylon is a, is a system of transnational slave trade. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, a lot of us don't realize that these, these plagues that are getting ready to come on Babylon uh, that we read about in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, uh, the, these bowl plagues and these uh, seal plagues and these trumpet plagues, all of these plagues are being, getting ready to be poured out on Babylon and it's related to uh, transnational slave trade. Let's do a, a recap of what we learned uh, in, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, if you may have to go back to part one and just uh, just uh, re uh, reacclimate yourself to uh, what was taught in chapter one, and if you hadn't if you hadn't looked at chapter one at all, just go back and read it because go back and look at it and and do the reading because uh, the, these lessons will build one upon another. So if you, if you if if you hadn't uh, got the knowledge that that you know from chapter one. Uh, you, you may be, you know, when we get to chapter two, there may be some things that we talked about in chapter one, in part one, uh, that that, uh, that that will help you to understand what we're talking about today. So we discussed the building of Babylon from Genesis 10 and 8 and 11, as well as its final fall in Revelation chapter 18. And like I said, the Bible says to come out of her, my people. Uh, Nimrod was the prince and earthly king of Babylon, and he was also a type of antichrist. Uh, he, he was worshiped by men, uh, him and his, both him and his wife, uh, Semiramis. Uh, they had a, a son whose name was Tammuz. Uh, and Nimrod was the sun god. And when Nimrod died, uh, the legend says that <coughs> his son Tammuz uh, was a reincarnation of Nimrod. And even in Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, we see the children of Israel, uh, God judging them because they, they, they were bowing down in the temple facing the east and they were worshiping the sun. They were worshiping Tammuz. And Babylon is a economic system. It's a political system and it's also a, <clears throat> a religious system uh, of the world that engages in transnational trade. And like I said, that transnational trade is it, it involves slavery. You know, when, when slave ships go out, uh, they not only take slaves, but they take uh, they take wine, they take silver, and they take gold, and they take clothing, uh, they take precious metals, uh, they take horses and animals, and they trade all sorts of things. Uh, so uh, when they exchange human bodies, they exchange them, and and especially what what we see in the uh, the uh, transatlantic slave trade, we saw uh, that a lot of times they would trade human beings for wine and for, uh, for rum. Uh, so th this whole system is about, it's about slavery and that's what God is getting ready to judge the nations over. And a lot of the church don't, don't believe that because they don't, you know, a lot of them, a lot of us don't read the Bible. A lot of us don't, uh, don't read prophecy. And, and when we read it, we, we read it and we don't try to read it for an, to get an understanding. You know, sometimes we have blinders on our, on our eyes when we read it, you know, and we, we, we're locked into our own, uh, our own denominational doctrines to where 
you know, when we when we see something and it's clear, we, we still don't believe it because it don't fit our doctrine. This system of Babylon was found, in this system of Babylon was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all who have been slain on earth. Babylon is willing to sacrifice any and everyone uh, for this system. So this system of Babylon, uh, it, it, you know, when, when, when the prophets will stand up and, and tell you what Babylon is and when the saints will preach against it, they will be persecuted. Some of them would die. So, so their blood is in this system and, and uh, this system is gonna be judged uh, because of, uh, of what they've done to, to God's people, to, to, the, to God's prophets that were sent uh, to call people out of Babylon. They were sent to warn people uh, and, and to tell people what Babylon is. They were slain. So God is saying, I'm gonna judge uh, the nations uh, and, and I'm gonna judge Babylon for what they've done to my people. And not only was the blood of the prophets and the saints found in her, but also Judah, uh, God's uh, a tribe, the tribe that Jesus is from, uh, was sold into the system. We read, read about this in the book of Joel. He said, you, you, you sold my people Judah into, uh, into slavery. You sold them to the Greeks. Uh, and we also see that Satan, due to his pride, was booted out of heaven. And we know that God hates pride. He hates a proud, proud look. He engaged in violent and, and unrighteous trade. Uh, so Babylon is connected with Satan regarding trade and it will be judged. Not only will it be judged, but uh, also Satan will be judged and destroyed. And who is the king of Tyre or AKA Babylon? Like I said, it's the same system, different names, uh, different locations, but the same system. Uh, Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19 gives us a, a description and shows us the identity of who the king of Babylon is. And, and this is the, the description of, it, of his nature. And it says that the signet of perfection. So he was, uh, he was this king of Tyre or king of Babylon is it, it, the signet of perfection, was at least, uh, full of wisdom and beauty uh, located in the Garden of Eden. And we know that there's only three people that were located in the Garden of Eden. We see that Adam and Eve were there, and we also see the serpent was there. So we need to figure out which one uh, this scripture is talking about. Is it talking about them or is it talking about the serpent? And he was covered with every precious stone. So we know that Adam and Eve were not covered with every precious stone. We know that they were in the garden, but nothing says, you know, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Genesis, that they were covered with every precious stone. Uh, they and it describes him as the anointed cherub. So that really pretty much uh, takes out uh, Adam and Eve, it eliminates Adam and Eve. So we know that we're talking about the serpent, the devil, or Satan. And he had a place in God's holy mountain. He was blameless in, in, in his ways until unrighteousness was found in him. And what was Satan seeing? E Ezekiel twenty-eight and sixteen through eighteen. It gives us some information about uh, what, what Satan did that got him cast out of heaven. Uh, and, and some of the key words here uh, is the abundance of trade. Uh, he, feel, he was filled with violence and unrighteous, unrighteous, the unrighteousness of, uh, of his trade uh, profane his sanctuaries. So let's, let's read this whole scripture. It says, in the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence in your midst and you sin. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O guardian cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was proud because of your beauty. Uh, you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I expose you before kings to feast their eyes on you. By the multitudes of your iniquities, in the unrighteousness of your trade, you profane your sanctuary. So I looked up this word abundance, and this, this word means a very large quantity of something. So, he, so, so Satan was, was deeply involved in his trade. He, 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 had, he had a very large quantity of, uh, of this trade. And, and it says you were filled with violence. And, and I looked up that word trade, it means trading in merchandise. So somehow, somehow Satan was involved in the trade of merchandise. 
and we, you know, we, we, it really didn't tell us what that merchandise was, but, you know, through understanding what Babylon is all about, we can get an idea of what he was trading. And it says, uh, the, the definition of violence is violence, uh, destruction, malice, ruthlessness, and fierceness. So, so that, those, those are the character, characteristics of uh, the, the trade that he was involved in. Uh, he was a cherub. Uh, and a cherub is a class of supernatural beings that serve in the presence of God. So Satan served in the presence of God. He was a supernatural being. And uh, we know that, you know, the destruction has been decreed against the king of Babylon and also against uh, Babylon itself. It's going to be destroyed. Revelation uh, chapter 12, verse 4, tells us that, uh, uh, that, that Satan, uh, his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven, which are the angels, and cast them to the earth. In Revelation uh, 12 and 9, it says, and the great dragon was thrown down that ancient serpent, which is the devil, that this is the person that was in the garden, the, 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 with Adam and Eve, the serpent, uh, who was called the devil and Satan the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. His angels. You know, that, that, to me, that sounds like ownership. You know, I, you know, back in biblical days, people would sell their service because they owed a debt and they would work as slaves to, to the person uh, who, who they owed that debt to until that debt was paid off. So I, you know, I don't know what was, you know, what the abundance of his trade was, you know. But uh, you know, but I'm kind of thinking that maybe, you know, he was trading and uh, enslaving angels, you know. Somehow he was tricking them into, uh, into serving him. You know that that's just you know conjecture. You know, it's, uh, there's nothing in the Bible that, that says that. This is just coming from me. This is this is just my my thinking so you know you you can you can take it or or you can you can leave it you know it's just it, it's just my opinion you know but 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 we do know that he was involved in some kind of trade and it was unrighteous trade and it was a whole lot of trade so uh we we can we can bank on that because that we find that in the word so we see the king of babylon is the devil is satan but let's look at who the prince of Babylon is, because there's a king and there's a prince and a ruler. And the prince and the ruler is, is, is a man. And it's, it's, it's the person who's in, who, who rules over Babylon, who's, who rules over this transnational trade system, who, who, who rules over this, this unrighteous system, you know, whether it's, uh, whether it's econ the economic portion or the, or the religious portion or the uh, uh, governmental portion. No, he rules over it. He controls it. So let's look at a description from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse 10, verse 1 through 10. And it, it'll describe the, the prince of Babylon. And verse 1 through 2, it says that the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is proud and you have said, I am a God. So, so this, this earthly ruler, he claims uh, divinity. He claims deity. You know, he claims he, he, he's proud and, and, and it says, I, I sit in the seats of the gods. You know, doesn't that sound like the devil? That's the same thing he was saying. He said, I, I, I will arise and I will sit on God's throne and, and I will proclaim, he, he's going to proclaim himself to be God. So, so this, this person is like, a, is like an antichrist type character. And uh, in the heart of the seas. So he rules from the heart of the seas. He rules uh, this transnational trade system. You know, he, he, he controls this, the, the seas. And whoever controls the seas controls the nations because th there's great wealth to be, to be made in, in this international trade system. That billions of dollars are traded every year on the seas and in the air uh, through the through the exchange of, of, of products and commodities, you know, and whoever is the head of that uh, will, will be wealthy and whoever, whichever nation controls that will be a wealthy nation. So that's why people go to war 
why nations war with one another to see who's going to control this system. Who, who's going to be the king of Babylon? Because, you know, the, the nation who does that would be uh, the, the greatest, na the most wealthiest nation on the earth. He says, uh, but, but yet you are but a God. So, so God is rebuking uh, this, this prince of Tyre. You know, you, you, you saying that you're a God, but you're you are but a man and no God. Though you make your heart like the heart of a God. And if you ever see anybody that's ruling over this system, they'll be a very proud person. They'll be a very arrogant person because they, they, they walk in, they, they will have great power and that power will go to their head, just like the devil. His beauty went to his head. So the wealth and the, uh, the power that comes from being the, the prince of Tyre or the prince of, over the system of Babylon will go to their heads and they will uh, exalt themselves, you know, to the point to where, uh, they claim to be God. And when we see all the, all the, the kings of the nations who control this system, we see uh, Nebuchadnezzar you know, built a statue and wanted people to worship his image. Uh, we see all the, uh, the, the, the Greek, uh, uh, the, 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 the Persian and the Greek uh, kings and uh, the Roman kings all wanted, all claimed to be God, all wanted to be worshiped as God. You know, whoever is head of this system pride comes with it and claims to be wiser than Daniel. You know, they claim their own wisdom, but you know, but you know, the Bible says that, you know, uh, the knowledge of the Lord is the beginning of, of uh, the, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of, of wisdom and knowledge. So w without, you know, if you don't know the Lord, then you, you are a fool, you know, but they claim to be wise. You have made wealth for yourself and have gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom and your trade, you have increased your wealth and your heart has become proud in your wealth. And that's what, that's what wealth does. You know, wealth without a relationship with God, you know, leads to great pride and, lead, pride and leads to destruction. You know, so uh, th this system uh, makes whoever controls it very wealthy, whichever nation controls it, very wealthy. The Prince of Babylon controls the international trade and economic economies of the world. And, and like I said, it, this system will buy and sell anything. And destruction has been decreed against the Prince of Babylon. And not only the Prince, but it's been de decreed against uh, Babylon itself and also those who are citizens of Babylon. <clears throat> so th there are similarities between the King of Babylon and the prince of Babylon. The prince has the same nature as the king. They have the very same nature. It is almost like the same person. No, but one is the devil, it is, is a, a, a spiritual creature, uh, and, and, and the other one uh, is, is a man. Uh, but they both walk in pride. They both claim wisdom. Even though they are in rebellion, a rebellion against God, that's not wise. <laughs> There's no wisdom in that whatsoever. Uh, they both covet silver and gold. Uh, the, the silver and gold is their God. You know, they'll do anything to get it. They'll trade human beings to get the silver and gold. Uh, they both were involved in unrighteous trade. They both will be destroyed by, sat by both Satan and the Antichrist, who will be the final prince of Babylon, a.k.a. Tyree. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation that, that he will cause uh, all men to receive a mark. And if you don't receive the mark of the beast, uh, then you won't be able to buy and sell. You won't be able to engage in commerce. And if you're a nation, you won't be able to engage in this transnational uh, trade. And your nation was, was, was starved. Because, you know, uh, we know that when... Uh, the, the, whoever controls this system, when they put embargo, trade embargoes and they put trade restrictions and uh, uh, tariffs and, you know, they, they can starve a nation out. They can decide, well, you know, nobody can, no other nation can trade with you anymore. And you can't control what, you can't trade with any nation. So when you, when you get locked out of that system, uh, your, your nation starves. You know, you, you can't get the things that you know your your country doesn't produce. Maybe your country doesn't produce some precious metals uh, that that's uh, that they need for 
uh, weapons and, and uh, cell phones or whatever. So if, if you if you if you don't have the natural resources to produce those things yourself, then you you're going to need other nations to, uh, to to buy those from other nations. But if, if you are on the restriction where you can't buy and sell anything, then uh, you're going to be defenseless. So this system is personified by a ship. Now, when, when you're reading uh, chapter uh, 26 through 28, it, it talks about a ship, but, but that's only a personification. You know, that's only a symbol of this system. You know, God wanted to give us a visual uh, uh, symbol so we could, understand, we, we could look at something and we could understand the principles that he's talking about. And each one of the, 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 uh, the, the portions of this ship uh, is, is represented by a, uh, a nation that supplies uh, the, uh, the, the parts of this ship. <clears throat> so it says the, uh, the, the planks are from Shinar. That, that's, a, that's a location. So the, the very planks are supplied by a nation. And then the, the masts are from Lebanon, from a whole different nation. The oars are from Bashan, a different place. Uh, the deck is from Cyprus. The sails and banners are from Egypt. The iron is from Elisha. The roars are from Sidon and Avid. The pilot is from Tyre. And the conquerors are from Gabon. So uh, each nation is participating in this system. It's not just one single nation. That, that's the idea that God is trying to, trying to give us, that it's not just one single nation. It's not just uh, Babylon or tired that's involved in this, all the nations are involved in this. All the nations have, have a part. And also all the nations will be judged. If you're not in the kingdom of God, uh, you're going to get judged by uh, according to your nation, according to what your nation has done. You know, the, the, this thousand year reign is, is you know, in this, this first judgment, it's going to be a judgment on nations. It's not going to be an individual judgment uh, uh, concerning your sins. That's that's uh, the great white throne judgment. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the judgment of, of the righteous when, uh, when the Lord comes back. So uh, th this, this system will be judged. You know, your nation will be judged according to what is done. If, you're, if your nation engaged in the transnational slave trade and, and you hadn't repented and come out of that nation and, and, and you're part of the kingdom, then you're going to get judged according to what your nation does. No, it, it may be, that may be harsh, but that's what the Bible tells us. So we had to go with what the Bible says, not, not our opinion or how we feel about it, but we have to, we have to, uh, we, we have to make our decisions based on what the word of God says. We may, we, it, it may be offensive, uh, but, but, but hey, I'd rather be offended than end up a judge in, in this system of Babylon. The Lord is saying, come out of her, not, not try to stay there and make it better, not try to stand there and defend it, not, not stand there and get your feelings hurt because God is, is talking about judging your nation. He's saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of this system, come out of Babylon and come into the kingdom so that your identity will no longer, no longer be in your nation. You won't be sitting and pledging allegiance to your nation. You, your, your allegiance will be to the kingdom. You'll be a citizen of the kingdom and a child of the king, child of the Lord. And, you know, and when the system is judged and destroyed, you won't be sitting there crying over it because you, you are, you are understand that in order for the, for the, for the kingdom to come, the kingdom of God to come, all of these systems must be destroyed. The only kingdom that's going to stand is the kingdom of God. That's it. And we see that this, this king, this Babylonian kingdom uh, has military support. It, it has armies that guard this whole system. It has men of war. Uh, you, you think that, you know, uh, the, the police force and the military forces are there to, uh, to protect the people and to support freedom uh, is, is, is really not. That's, not. that's not the main purpose of a military. The main purpose of a military is to, is to guard this system. It, it's to provide an army, you know, to either, if you're not ruling over this system, to send your army out to, to, to take rule over it or either if you are ruling over this system to protect this system because this system is bringing in wealth to your nation. 
If you lose power over this system, you lose power over the wealth. So you, you raise an army to protect it where if any other nation tries to attack you know, your nation, try to take control of this transnational trade system, uh, then you can fight them off. They hung their shields uh, and helmet in, in you, in Babylon. They gave you splendor. Men of Avid and Helot uh, were on your walls all around and men of Gamad were in your towers. So th this, is, this is also transnational uh, military support because you know, a lot of times we, we, we form alliances. You know, the United States is in an alliance with other nations uh, to support them in war. You know, so it, it, it's, it protects the system of, of trade. And when, you know, when uh, there's conflicts, it's usually uh, regarding resources, it, it's, it's regarding trade routes, it, it's, it regards uh, something that, 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 su that supports this economic system that, that's gonna make nations wealthy. Uh, people don't go to war over ideas. People don't go to war over to, to bring democracy into other nations, that's foolishness. Uh, they go to war over resources. They go to war over oil. They go to war over trade routes. So let's look at the nations and, and their participation in this uh, transnational slave trade, uh, this transnational uh, trade in the merchandise, which includes slaves. So Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 12 says, Tarshish. And which nation is Tarshish? Uh, current nation? Uh, that's the nation of Spain. Spain did business with you uh, because of your great wealth of every kind, silver, iron, tin, lead, they exchanged for your wares. So they're, they're letting you know uh, what was being exchanged in this system. It's the same thing that's being exchanged now on the New York uh, and London and, and other uh, trade markets. All of these, things, all of these uh, commodities are still being traded. Uh, Ezekiel 27, 13 through 14 says, Javan. And which, na which current nation is Javan? It's Greece. Tubal and Meshach, uh, that's Turkey. Those are, those are current nations in Turkey. Uh, they traded with you. And let's look, at, let's look and see what they're trading. You know, it, it's one thing to trade silver, iron, tin. Now, now if, you were, if these nations were doing that righteously, I, I don't think that God would have a problem with it. But, but they're, they're, they're getting into unrighteous trade. They're getting into greed where there's no limit to the, the what's being traded on this market and God is angry with it. No, he says that, that, that Javon, Tubal, and Meshach traded with you. They exchange human beings and vessels of bronze for your merchandise. So they're trading people. They're trading slaves for vessels of bronze and, and, and merchandise that's being traded in this transnational uh, slave trade. From Beth Togomar. Beth Togomar is another, uh, another descendant of, of Japheth, uh, the European nations. They exchange horses, war horses, and mules for your wares. So they're, they're exchanging military, uh, military materials, uh, things that, 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 that are used in war, uh, horses and war horses and mules. Uh, that's what they're trading. So, so these are all the European nations. The, this is Javan which is Greece and Tubal, Meshach, which is Turkey, and Beth Togomar, which is another descendant of Japheth. Uh, so these are all European nations and they're, they're engaged in, in, in the trade of, uh, of human beings and also uh, weapons for war. Does that, does that jive with history? Uh, do we see Europe uh, engaged in this transnational slave trade leading in this transnational slave trade and the trading of uh, military material that is uh, <clears throat> the, uh, these weapons of, of warfare. Uh, we, we make a lot of money selling, selling weapons to other nations. Uh, in Ezekiel chapter 27, 17 through 19, Judah and the land of Israel traded with you. So Judah got involved in this transnational slave trade even though God didn't want them to be involved in it. We see that Solomon, uh, through his greed, and we know that you know, he was wise at first, but then uh, he, he, you know, he, he went and, and, and disobeyed God and uh, married all the foreign women and his heart was changed. And he got Israel involved in this trans, 
uh, national trade. And our next lesson is what we're going to talk about, how Judah got involved, how Israel got involved. It says, uh, they exchange for, for your merchandise, wheat of a minute, meal, honey, oil, and balm. Damascus did business with you. That, that's still Israel. Did business with you for your abundant goods because of your great wealth of every kind. This system is rich. This system has great wealth. It's got silver, gold, it's trade and everything. Uh, wine of, of Helbun and wool of Shahar and cask of wine from Uzel. The exchange uh, for your wares, wrought iron, cassia, and calamus. Uh, were bought it for your merchandise. So, like I said, Judah got involved. Israel and Judah got involved in this system. Ezekiel 27, 24 through 25, it says, in your market, these traded with you uh, in choice garments, in clothes of blue and embroidered, embroidered works, and in carpets of colored material, bound with cords and made secure. The ships of Tarsus travel. So, so, Tarsus or Spain, they're the ones who drive in the slave ships and providing the, the transportation for all of this, these goods. And this would jive later on. We, we see Spain involved in the, uh, the, the transnational slave trade. You know, they, they're the ones who, uh, when, when, when Judah was in, in, in Spain, uh, the kings decreed that, you know, that, that, that the Jews had to leave and they sold their children uh, as slaves. Uh, they sent them to the west coast of Africa uh, into, into a slave colony. Uh, so, so, and they also sold them uh, and transported them uh, all around the world in, in the uh, trans transatlantic slave trade. They went to, went to Europe, they went to, uh, went to uh, the islands, uh, they went everywhere. They went all over the world. They were, they were sold everywhere as slaves. So the table of the nations we find in the book of Genesis chapter 10, uh, God doesn't take long before he, he, he breaks down the nations for us. And, and if you don't understand the, the breakdown of the nations, if you don't understand who, who, uh, who these children became, which nations these children became, then you're going to be, you're going to be lost when it comes to prophecy, because sometimes often the prophecy will say, uh, they won't say Greece, they'll say Javan, you know, so, so they'll prophesy something concerning Javan. So if you don't know who that nation is, then you're going to be confused. So Javan is Greece. That's one of the, that's, and, and Tubal is Turkey. And Meshach is also Turkey. And all three of these are the sons of Japheth, which is the father of the European nations. Togomar, which is Turkey, is the son of Gomer and grandson of Japheth, the father of the Euro European nations. Tarshish is Spain. It's the son of Javan, which is Greece, and grandson of Japheth. <clears throat> and we got to understand that, you know, that, you know, the Bible says that, you know, in the last days that nations will rise up against nation. You know, that word nations means ethnos. That's where we get the word ethnos and ethnicity from. So what he's saying is ethnicity will rise up against ethnicity in the last days. And isn't that what we're seeing? No, he says that he didn't come to bring peace to the earth, but he came to bring a sword. He came to bring division. He came to set a man against his father, a man and a daughter against a mother. So, you know, he, he, so we're seeing division. So a lot of times we, we think that, you know, that's contrary to, uh, to you know, what the Bible teaches. You know, we, we're a one, we, we ought to be one in the kingdom, but these nations, uh, they're going to war against one another. They're going to fight to, 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 for the resources of the world. They're going to fight to, uh, to, be, to control this, this Babylonian system. They're going to war with one another. And we take a look at this, uh, the Mediterranean Sea. And, and we see uh, it, the person who has access to this Mediterranean Sea and who can control the Mediterranean uh, controls the trade between all of these nations. All of these nations are connected uh, by the Mediterranean. Uh, we see Greece, uh, we see Rome, and we see Spain, we see North Africa, uh, Libya, Egypt. Uh, we see uh, we, we, we see uh, uh, 
Israel, we see uh, Lebanon, we see all of these nations connected by this one, uh, this one uh, body of, of water. And whoever controls that body, and whoever controls the trade in those ports, uh, whoever, whoever has the ships that can deliver those goods, uh, they will be wealthy. They will be super wealthy. And so you see why all of these nations are always at war with one another, because they're at war to see who's going to control Babylon, who's going to be the, the prince of Babylon. And James gives us some ideas of, of why nations uh, go to war with one another. James 4, 1 through 2 says, what causes quarrels? And what causes fights among you? He's going to give us the answer. He said, it is, it is, it is, is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? The passions of nations are at war within them? That they want to control the resources? They not only want their resources, they want everybody else's resources. Because they know if they collect all the resources of the, of the world, the world is going to have to come to them uh, to buy those resources. It says you, you, you desire and you do not have. So you murder. So, so these nations are murdering, murdering one another because uh, they want to, they desire what other nations have instead of being, being content with the, what, what they have. So, they, so he says you covet and you cannot attain. So you fight and you quarrel. And that's what the fighting and the quarreling is all about. Not only just between individuals, but, but between nations. In the current news, Greece and Turkey are engaged in a conflict, which will probably uh, end in war. You know, they're, they're out in the oceans and, and they're, they're fighting over resources. They're fighting over uh, trade routes. They're, they're fighting over access to the seas. And, and, and specifically here, uh, they're fighting over nat uh, natural gas resources that are found out in the Mediterranean Sea. That, that sea that I just showed you. So they're fighting over uh, natural gas resources. So, so they're, they're fighting to control uh, the resources of that region. Greece has enlisted also Israel to help them. So this thing could, could, could get large very quickly. Uh, Syria also is engaged not only in, in a civil war between themselves, but also a war with Turkey. And like I said, it ain't about, you know, uh, Turkey want to see Syria free. And about, you know, uh, the Syrian uh, president, you know, gas his own people. They don't care nothing about that. All they care about is those resources. They care about land. They care about resources, natural resources and physical resources. And, and they care about power and control. That's it. They don't care nothing about bringing on democracy. They don't care about how the people are treated. They could care less. All they care about is, 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 uh, is satisfying their own greed. Uh, for more power and more wealth. The U.S. and China are in dispute over the offshore resources across most of the South China Sea. You know, they're, they're, they're engaged in games with one another. They're, you know, they're, they're, doing, they're provoking one another. And, and before long, you know, somebody is probably going to make a mistake, and we're going to find ourselves in World War III. And it ain't going to be something that, that we want because this, this next war ain't going to be like our war, our wars that are fought in other people's countries. This one might 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 well be fought here, so it may not be to our benefit, you know, to fight over these resources, but to but to really just be able to sit down and and, and talk, you know, nation talk to one another and, and work out a plan where they can share the resources because the ocean is huge. You know, there's no need to be fighting over over anything. There's, God has given us enough to where we don't have to fight. <clears throat> so like I said before, these are some of the issues that nations uh, go to war over. They go to war over trade routes. They go to war over access to these routes and access to shipping routes, access to the airways, access to, to, to financial markets. Uh, and, and they fight over who will be the prince of Babylon, AKA Tyre. So, so those are the things that nations fight over. Not democracy, no, not not uh, the way uh, th those citizens are being treated. They they don't fight over principles. They they fight over resources. They fight over uh, they fight over power and wealth. 
And all three of these systems will be destroyed. All three, the, the king of Babylon is going to be destroyed, Satan. Uh, the, the Antichrist uh, is going to be destroyed. And also Babylon, this world system, is going to be destroyed. So, you know, you, you got to make up in your mind, you know. And, and you know, the book of Revelation talk, talks about how, you know, the kingdom, of, the kingdom of God will be cheering when they see Babylon go up in flames. <clears throat> yeah. but but the people of the world the, the citizens of babylon the people who are who are invested in babylon they're going to be weeping you know when they see this economic system destroyed when they see the when they see the stock market just fall and crash and uh and, and never to never to rise again they're going to be weeping because uh they they're invested they they got they got thousands and some tens of thousands and some millions and in, in, in invested into babylon into this system of greed so when they see it destroyed they they're 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 all of their wealth will go up in flames with it but but the kingdom of god who have stored their their, their wealth up into into the kingdom and and stored their wealth up into uh and, and to helping others and blessing others and and building the church uh they're going to be they're going to be rejoicing because in order for the kingdom to fully come uh, Babylon must be destroyed. Babylon, the system of this world, have to fall. So come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> come, system of God, kingdom of God, that, whatever it takes. And so, so, so understanding this gives us an idea why Jesus was oh so upset when he found, the, uh, found people buying and selling in his temple and also the money changers. And they were they were bringing Babylon into his into his temple, and, and he he had a zeal uh, for his temple. And let's read John two uh, verse thirteen to, through seventeen, and, and let's get some an understanding of of why the Lord was so upset. It says the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went into up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons. So they were selling sacrifices. So people, you know, some people had to travel, you know, long distances to get to the temple. Uh, so when they, so they didn't want to bring uh, their their sacrifices with them. So when they got to the temple, they would purchase sacrifices. And a lot of times, the people who were buying, who, who were selling these uh, oxen and sheep and pigeons, they were selling them at, at an exorbitant price because they they knew that the people were in need. So uh, so in, in, in the Babylonian economic system. Uh, the 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 uh, the demand for products uh, usually controls the price, not not righteousness. And then uh, there were also it says and the money changers sitting there, and they wasn't just you know they they would come from different nations, so they would need to uh, exchange their money from their nation uh, and, and and get money from uh, get get the money in the uh, in, in Israel's uh, or or uh, Roman money or, wh or whatever they were using, they would have to exchange it, but they wasn't exchanging it uh, equally, one for one. They were, they were making a, a humongous profit you know, on this money changing. And making, and making a whip, of course, he drove them out of the temple and, and with the sheep and the oxen. You know, he, 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 you know, he, he, he went off. He was like, don't bring that into my temple. Don't bring uh, that that greed and selfishness and that that Babylonian thinking uh, and, and that you know make a buck uh, by any means necessary into my temple, you know that my temple is holy, you know it's the opposite of Babylon. You know take that to your temple. Don't bring that in here. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned the tables. He went off. He got a whip and began to it been, it began to beat people with the whip and turn over tables. He set it off. And he told those who sold pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house, listen to this, a house of trade. He said, don't make my house a house of trade. So we know that Babylon, the, the system of Babylon, is a system of unrighteous trade. It's a system of wickedness. He said, don't make my house, you know, this, you know don't try to transform my house into th this house of Babylon. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Lord is zealous for his house. That's why, that's why I'm, 
I'm hesitant that when people come to me and say, no, I, I got this marketing scheme. No, let me, let me bring it in and, and market it to the people in the church. No, I, you know, I can't do that. No, I, I can see, you know, if you, if you wanted to do a fundraiser, you know, you were selling, you know, plates in order to, uh, in order to do something in the church. But if you, if you come in with, with, uh, with something from Babylon, something that's unrighteous, uh, something that's, that, that's full, that's based on greed and selfishness and, you know, uh, the systems of the world, uh, don't bring it to the church. So in conclusion, uh, we discovered that the king of Babylon, a.k.a. Tyre, is Satan. Uh, we discovered that the prince of Babylon is the, is the nations that control the system. We discovered that the source of war is in conflict. We discovered that, that Babylon, a.k.a. Tyre, is multinational. It's not just one nation. It, it's a, it's a co co conglomerate of nations. We discovered that the, the roles of, uh, of the different na nations in this system and, and, and in the next part, part three, we'll discuss Solomon's uh, introduction of Israel to the system of Babylon. It was Solomon who, who introduced Israel to this system. And that's what we're going to discuss. And I just want to thank you for joining me this evening. And I just want to say, you know, God bless you and may heaven shine upon you. And good night.